In this video, we will discuss the Drude model of conductivity. So the Drude model is a semi-classical method that attempts to explain the conductivity of materials. To explain the Drude model, I have two diagrams here. These are conductors. So according to the Drude model, in absence of an electric field, so in the first diagram we don't have an electric field, in the absence of an electric field, according to the Drude model, the charge carriers, which in this case could be the electrons, but let's say any charge carriers, according to the Drude model, without an electric field in the conductor, the charge carriers would be moving freely around the material, and while they move throughout the material, they are just like gas molecules in a container, unbound, and they are just moving throughout. That's according to the Drude model. And the distance, they move before colliding. Of course, as they move around, they collide with the stationary atoms within the material. So the average distance they travel before colliding is what we call the mean free path. So in this case, we'll have lambda to be the mean free path. This is the distance, on average, the charge carriers will move before colliding with a stationary atom. Okay. And in the presence of an electric field, so if we connect a source of EMF here, a potential difference, an electric field is applied, let's say in this direction, so the charge carriers will begin moving on account of this electric field that has been applied make this better okay there we go if we have negative charge carriers they will move in this direction opposite to the field while positive charge carriers will move in the direction of the field so let's illustrate that we have charge carriers in red they will still move this time round they will move in the direction of the field so they will try to move in that direction the charge carriers but even then, because there are stationary atoms in this material, these charge carriers will still find difficult time because they have to collide with some of these stationary atoms. Now on average, the time taken before from one collision to another, we'll call that the relaxation time. I'll call that tau. So this is the relaxation time. The average time taken from one collision to another also as the electrons move they will be moving with a certain velocity let's call that v d and we'll call that the drift velocity the drift velocity of the electrons okay so now according to the drude model the net force on these electrons let's have that the net force on the electrons is going to be equal to the force due to the electric field minus the damping force. The damping force is the force that is causing them not to move in the direction opposite to the field. The damping force is the force that is making them to collide with the atoms. So the net force is given by MA. In this case, A is going to be dV dt. Okay, this is the drift velocity. The force due to the field is E Q. The Q is the charge on the charge carriers. The charge on the charge carriers. Okay, I should have used E here, but Q will still work just for generalization purpose. The damping force in this case is given by M. By the way, M is the mass of the charge carrier, perhaps an electron or something, okay, times Vd divided by tau. Okay, there we go. The damping force is proportional to Vd divided by tau. So that's what we have. And under steady conditions, under steady conditions, In steady state, that means the acceleration 
is going to be 0 by acceleration equals to 0 I mean dv dt is going to be 0 okay so from this equation it means eq is going to be equal to m vd over tau should I have written this better as tau so we know that the drift velocity is given by the current divided by NEA. So I can have N times, okay. Since I did not use E, let me stick with Q, the charge carrier, okay, times A. In this case, I have N times Q times VD equals I over A, which is the current density, J. So, I substitute for VD in this expression. We'll have EQ equals, let's have more space here. Okay, thanks. So, there we go. In this case, we'll have EQ equals M divided by tau times, instead of having VD, we'll have J divided by N times Q times VD, oops, not VD, that's it. We just have I over NQ, but also J is the same as E times sigma. This is the microscopic form of Ohm's law. Let's see what this becomes. Because M divided by tau times J, which is E times sigma divided by N Q. So, as you can see, E cancels out. We have Q. Okay, I'll just write everything here. Q squared tau times N divided by M equals sigma. Okay. So, sigma is proportional to the square of the charge carriers, the relaxation time, the number of charge carriers in, and inversely proportional to the mass. So this equation actually shows us that the Drude model is very accurate in qualitatively predicting the conductivity in materials because as we can see, conductivity is an intrinsic property of a material and yes, conductivity should depend on the number of charge carriers. The more charge carriers, the better the conductivity. So that's predicted well. The relaxation time, well, the larger the relaxation time, the better the conductivity. Okay, the number of charge carriers, yes, more charge carriers would mean that we have better conductivity. And then inversely proportional to the mass, if the mass is small, obviously the charge carriers are lighter, so they can move faster through the material. Okay, so this is the Drude model, and it's very accurate in predicting qualitatively the behavior or the conductivity in materials. However, the Drude model fails to quantitatively predict some of the conductivity characteristics of materials, which are then explained in quantum physics. For this video, we'll stop here.